At first, uh, thank the organizer uh, to let me present my, uh, this work. Um, I will explain the, uh, the title later. My name is Yong Tian from National Central University. And here are my collaborators. Uh, this work was based on three of my, uh, three of our previous, previous work. Indeed, we, uh, we have a, a, another one in submission. Um, this is our line. So first, I will briefly introduce this book, uh, the big one, and we will talk about the so-called scaling relation in JLC. And uh, as we know, for the IR and the uh, background totally feature relation, then uh, here we investigate the similar correlation on PCG cluster scale. So uh, here is the concept of the missing S problem. So we, um, so mainly we have the observed uh, acceleration from Newton's law, and uh, we have the periodical acceleration. So the dark matter concept is introduced to, resu to resolve the uh, insufficient periodical mass due to assuming that the observed acceleration equal to periodical acceleration. So <coughs> they, are, they are not the same. So we have to look at in a way of acceleration discrepancy instead. So why don't we investigate, uh, I, I, mean, I mean measure these two acceleration instead, and uh, this is the concept for the radial acceleration relation. And we, uh, <coughs> we have, we, uh, we have heard this, this a lot, so I won't uh, talk about this too much. And uh, I'd like to point out that the, this parameter political relation can be actually induced by the concept of the radial acceleration relation, as well as in Mount, which proposed 40 years ago, <coughs> also then a prediction from Mount. So, so we, if we took, but this radial acceleration relation is an empirical correlation, and Mount is what we interpret as a, a multiple dynamic law. But if we investigate the Galaxy cluster system, this is a long-standing issue for Mark. Uh, this, this, work has, this work has been done by uh, Sanders in 1999. And uh, so vertical axis here is dynamical mass, and uh, horizontal axis is for the gas mass. So um, even if we apply months, we still find uh, there is a, a so-called residual um, missing mass in Mount, which is the uh, dynamical mass is still uh, too large compared with, uh, with the gas mass. So how about to investigate the IR on cluster scale? How will, how will we get? So this is uh, from, uh, so we, we started in Fondancy. And uh, this is one example of the galaxy cluster. So here, um, the blue the blue color here represents for the X-ray gas. Due to the strong uh, gravitational potential, most of the barrier inside the uh, galaxy cluster are unknown <coughs> gas emitting the X-ray. And uh, in the center, we have the so-called the brightest cluster galaxy, which usually are the info, giant info galaxy, located at the center of the, uh, of, of the galaxy cluster. They are both the geometrical center, kinematical center, and the, uh, the, the center of the potential well. And uh, with the surrounding, we have the member galaxy. And then, uh, but however, we will count all the periodical mass for the, for the we, within the galaxy cluster. We still, we still cannot account for its total potential. So <coughs> here is the ingredient in galaxy cluster in our study. And we focus on the so-called uh, collection sample, the cluster lensing and the supernova survey with Harvard. And this is a uh, 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 25 massive galaxy cluster uh, we can have. And uh, uh, we have the uh, superior spatial result, uh, result data for, for each galaxy cluster. And then for the observ observational mass was measured by lensing, gravitational lensing, for both strong lensing and weak lensing. <coughs> strong lensing for the, for the inner object like BCG. <coughs> and for variable mass, we need to consider the dominant X-ray mass and the subdominant stellar mass as well as BCG mass. So here is a, uh, 
uh, is our, our result. So for left panel here, this is the IR for the lensing uh, uh, lensing acceleration versus uh, uh, gas. Okay, uh, this is the gas acceleration. And uh, but if we want to uh, investigate the IR, we need to account for the baryonical mass. So here, um, although, the, although the gas mass is a dominant component, but we still have 10 to 20 percent scalar mass. And this is a, 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 a scaling relation between the scalar mass and the baryonical mass. And it's turned out for the, for the inner part, then we, ha we have around 20% uh, for the cell mass. So we, so we will account for it, and uh, it becomes like a, a little bit straight, uh, straight line. And moreover, if we consider internal uh, object like a BCG, and uh, we, we, we have the measurement at the 14 kilo per second, the red diamond here, 20 of them and a different color return at a different distance. For example, orange color return for 18 theta of cash cluster at 100 kilo per second. And for the purple is at, uh, uh, at 600 kilo per second. And surprisingly, we find a weaken weighted blend with a linear correlation. And it presents an offset the, the, dash line, the dash line here is a result uh, from, phase, from spiral galaxy. And uh, our result, uh, fitting with the by NCNC method with a flat file, and uh, it's given us the, the slope of the delta of the five. So it, this is the a parallel to the low acceleration limit of the IR of a month. And uh, the residual <coughs> diagram presents uh, like a Gaussian. And the, the for and, the we, and the from this correlation, then we will have a, a very high. It, it will indicate this this intercept indicate a larger acceleration scale, which is around uh, 10, to, 10 to the minus nine. So it's about 17 times larger than uh, what we get from the IR. So here we also analyze the residual here. So for uh, for the residual against the radius, redshift, surface density, and the baryonical mass, we, we didn't uh, um, beside the, the radius there's a small correlation, but even for the redshift we didn't find any obvious correlation from the data itself. So here is a full issue uh, for the proposed by uh, Desmond uh, 2007 and and the line 12. So this is a comparison between these four issues. So in the original, in the IR galaxy, then we have the acceleration scale, G data, and low acceleration loop, <coughs> the open file, and the, the, tight, the tightness of, of uh, interesting tightness of this correlation. And the net, no correlation between the residual and the other galactic properties. And in our study, surprisingly, we find there is a similarity between these. But instead, we have a, a, a larger acceleration scale, and uh, we have a small correlation between the residual and the radius. The original scale, scale is still, still high, it's uh, just around 15%. This result was major from the original lensing. So, thank you. So, could it be, if we assume it's barely, so could it, uh, what can we get? Uh, what, what can we get for the implication? So here is the so-called um, space helpers to to, uh, uh, to recall this as a mass velocity dispersion relation. This is a, a kind of like the parallel Faber Jackson correlation. If we assume this relation, then we can simply uh, get this correlation but with a larger acceleration scale. So we from, uh, from our previous results, so we would like to investigate them, this so called uh, parallel vector generation on BCG cluster scale. So, in order to achieve that, <coughs> we need to look at the BCG and as well as galaxy cluster. So, we look at the high sample and high cluster and the manga sample. 
So here is uh, we so we we get the membership uh, from the up, from the optical measurement for each galaxy cluster. Then we when we plot their uh, basic uh, basic distribution profile, then then we surprisingly we find most of them treat like the flake profile. So so we can get the tail for flat tail for each one of them. And as for the BCG, uh, they are identified by, by the Manga team and uh, just by uh, so it's originally um, identified by by Yang Xiao in 2007 by the uh, Hello Best uh, algorithm. Then uh, then it's re-identified in a column making Q diagram as well as the membership distri distribution. So uh, they are all, they are at the center of the uh, surrounded by its membership, and they are the, the brightest uh, uh, <coughs> gas. So here is the, the Abasi dispersion profile. The original is the uh, two-dimensional two Abasi dispersion profile. But we, if we consider each circle, then we can plot the one-dimensional Abasi dispersion profile. Surprisingly, we find a flat, nearly flat profile. But if we calculate the baryonic power acceleration for each of our samples, they are all larger than A now. Larger than G data. So originally I expect there is a declining profile, like Kasparian decline. This is what I usually found in, in uh, ordinary circles for the high energy density profile. So I have no idea why this. But since they are, there is a flat profile, so I can study the mass velocity dispersion. So here is our result. We, we do find there is a parallel projection correlation. And uh, the green dash line here represents for the, uh, the usual periodical projection relation in uh, in Tokyo. And uh, uh, can be implied by the IR or MAP. <coughs> okay, so 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 from the data itself, we find the slope is 4.1. It's very close to, to 4. And the intercept gives us a, a similar um, acceleration scale like our previous study. So how about the dynamical IR for those BCG? So for our for our uh, sample, it is very simple because it's present like a nearly flat uh, Vasi dispersion. So we can ma simply model them by the, by the linear relation. And uh, then, then we can account, uh, and uh, here the baryonic mass was by the main, um, by the photos the mass plus the uh, calculator for the Celsius profile at uh, around one effective radius. Then we, we then we calculate them for the Dynamical acceleration as well as the dynamical acceleration. And surprisingly, we find there's a high population uh, so, aligned with uh, our 20 clash BDG and the 46 clash cluster data. These are from the lens measurement. But uh, our non BCG uh, was, co was calculated by the kinematic, by the dynamics. But they are consistent with, it, with each other. Thank you. And we, we do also plot the mass correlation, and we find uh, the up. Oh, by the way, I have to mention the uh, intercept gave us a consistent uh, acceleration scale, which is uh, which is which is uh, thirteen times larger than than A now. Uh, and the intrinsic scatter is very tight. We have only five percent for all this sample. I have an idea of how it is. How, how it is. And the uh, final is, the, uh, how can we uh, get the implication by the acceleration scale? The view is by the uh, uh, by, by Mirko 1984. And we can, we can consider this. So uh, we, can, we can identify there is a so-called scale length, and it's implied by the acceleration scale. So for um, for Mang or I, usually we will have the wrong. Uh, so okay, in our sample, usually we will have 100 to 200 
fuzzy dispersion for evil, for evil chaos. And uh, if we if, uh, if we calculate the scale length, which is around 3 to 10 kiloparsecond, this scale length indicates where it's become flat, flat tail. But here in our sample, if we consider a larger observation scale here, then we will have uh, uh, we will uh, we will get the flat flat tail very quickly. So this is a comparison. They are all uh, high sub density scales. But uh, the up panel here is the BCG in our sample. Lower panel is the ordinary infrared galaxy from outer 3D. And uh, for this ordinary infrared galaxy, they, they present like a tolerant fly, as in my uh, previous study. But uh, here is what I don't understand. The body dispersion in BCG are just too large and flat. I have no idea what it is. Here is a short remark. For, for this, that um, um, in total we have three different kinds of gravitationally bounded system. The, the, uh, the first layer is a solar system, and uh, we have the <coughs> galaxy. Then the largest one is the galaxy cluster. And right now, uh, we know the Newtonian dynamics is no longer applicable in galaxy system. But the, on basic cluster scale, we do find there is a kind of um, similar correlation here. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is the remark. I, I think I just stop here. Thank you very much. Actually, correspondent about this, but I want to expose it to the public as well. Can we look at your your BTFR, for example, for clusters? <coughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, as far as I understand, what you plot there for clusters is the total mass. So, including the gas mass, gas the dominant mass. component plus the right. But it's not really the total mass because you take. What I understand that we have corresponded about this. You take the gas mass within a certain radius, which is about one parsec, and when you look at the, at the accumulated mass plot, it doesn't actually saturate at this radius. You can see that it is still going up, but they ran out of sensitivity, and so the total mass could actually be much larger, maybe a factor of 10 larger. So I, I think this is not really representative of the mass. And I think that the next talk will probably yes, say yes, something yes. about this, from, right? And, from, from there we're into that. Right, and so, for example, your, your, if, if we go again to the, what you call the parallel RAR, then it's not parallel. I mean, it's only parallel within a certain range. Yes, for the law. And when you go, it goes nearer the, the galactic uh, oh. RAR. So it's not a parallel, but there's no new acceleration scale. If you go to smaller accelerations, I mean, further, further out in the cluster, then the observed one will approach the, the galactic one. There is okay, even I a claim that it yes, went yes. below it, right? Okay, so, I, I, I've, uh, I've mentioned that in the collection table, the measurement for, uh, for the X-ray gas mass is only up to um, most around 800 kiloparseconds, not even reached to okay. 500. So it's not so the total mass, so why do you yes. plot it as the, in the bionic Tally Fisher or whatever, the, the analog of the Tally Fisher election? You need to take the total mass, not just mass at some radius. You know, if the sensitivity was, was worse, then all your masses would uh, be lower because you can only reach uh, half a kiloparsec. You know? So what is the meaning of taking the mass at some radius that it doesn't represent anything there. We, we do plot the tyrannical uh, television version. I, I didn't present here, I can, I can show you later. Thank you very much for your time. There's a question? I just wanted to ask about the, uh, the lensing mass. Uh, so, when we calculate uh, the, the enclosed mass from the rotation lensing, you actually take the projected mass, so you don't take only the mass from the BCG, but also from the gas that is in front of and behind the galaxy. So you can actually flatten the whole galaxy cluster. Yeah, 
2D image. So I wanted to ask what is the contribution of mass of this gas in front of the galaxy and behind compared to the mass of the galaxy. Okay. So for BTG here, this is very simple because this is just by strong lensing. And uh, because from the weak lensing, then we can we can get their potential. Then we can model the uh, three-dimensional three mass distribution. <coughs> then last part of how we get for the total mass as well as the total operation here. <coughs> is that one? Is that your question? I, I guess what we'll tries like theoretically speaking, is there any way to understand why the value of A0 might be 17 times higher in a uh, galaxy cluster uh, than in galaxies? What? Yeah. 17. 17, yeah. I, this is why I'm here. I want to ask you guys. <laughs> Because I, I don't understand what I get here. This is just from data itself. I have no idea. Because when I first studied months, study Ivergas, everything can be explained by month. But so that's why I don't understand. BCG, they are Ivergas, they are just trying Ivergas, but they are within at the extent of the galaxy cluster. Why they are very different? Even for the lensing and for, for the kinematic profile. And for, for the kinematic profile, we we, we find they are just within one infinity radius. So, I have no idea. It's, it's too, too flat. There's something related to the galaxy cluster environment, uh, must be, rather than the spatial length scale involved, for example. Just a simple question. Of which redshifts are the cluster you are studying? Oh, oh, which red sheet? Oh, which red sheet? Oh, okay. okay. Last, last, last important question. Sorry, I, I have one slide here. Uh, for the residual. Okay. From the. Uh, this is the residual missing. Uh, re, re, residual diagram. As you can see, for the clash sample, they are at most to 0 0.6. But for manga sample, they are. Uh, just up to 0.15 of it. Okay. There were questions in this direction. Uh, I had a, a quick question. <laughs> uh, well, maybe a comment and a question. A comment is uh, there was this paper that by my yeah. former student, uh, uh, Alistair Hudson, you know, trying to fit uh, galaxy clusters with BCG using what's called extended mode, allowing the A mode to be sensitive to whatever the potential. Okay, it's an only example. Okay, we we found an example that works quite well for uh, a range of clusters, including their BCG. Okay, uh, that's just a comment, and hope you uh, follow up on that. Uh, Another one I saw, I saw on Tom Richler's uh, slide, the first on uh, NGC 1399, he was saying that that galaxy fits Mond very well as a CD, as a BCG galaxy. That's my understanding. Maybe I got it wrong without needing the 17 a not. I just need a clarification. Okay, here we only have 50 samples, so I, I, I do not invest all the BCG. So I also wonder, is our sample just real happen to be 50 or safe <coughs> and consistent with each other? Which one, so is, I, I have no idea. Which one is NGC 139? NGC. No. I guess it's Fornex, right? Central yeah. Fornex or something. Is it the. Oh, oh, last four. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> Do you mention here? No. This is from outer 3D, so they, they are consistent with Mom. They are not BCG. I, I just, for the, so sorry for the confusion, I just, for the Which comparison. Which is not here? Or? 
No. So, so uh, you're talking about the same for galaxy yes. or next cluster? Yeah. The so the next cluster as a whole is not consistent with more than these next to enhance it. Uh -huh. but, uh, but maybe in the central region it works? I'm not sure. Okay, so but not in conflict there, with here. Anyway. Pass the microphone. <coughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, first of all, a beautiful word, uh, no doubt. It's very nice. Um, yeah, uh, regarding the, the Phonics cluster, uh, or 1399, in the, the, um, um, uh, the velocity dispersion, the projected velocity dispersion, is also constant. So what you have, have shown in, in the, uh, the constant velocity dispersion, you find also in several nearby bright galaxies, so that's not, not very... Uh, astonishing, I would say. You find sometimes even even a rising uh, velocity dispersion. Yeah. Uh, regarding the, the the masses of your clusters, I cannot spontaneously comment much on that. So no idea how the one one has to look into the details. I'd say and even even at nearby galaxies, it is uh, uh, if there are in, in a dense environment, it is it is difficult to to derive reliable masses. I would say. Same with Bernard. Any other questions? All right. Yeah, thanks for all the right pictures on. So, I, I, I'm wondering, what, did you, what did you, do you take for the whole intergalactic gas? Uh, uh, what do you assume, what, what value for the mass of the whole intergalactic gas you have in this diagram? Uh, Oh, ah, nice. What intergalactic gas? Oh, oh, uh, in intergalactic gas, uh, which is uh, extra, like X-ray gas, or... Yes? Uh, oh, yes, uh, so they, they measure from the uh, chain drop. We, we, have, we have both measurements from, from chain drop. Could you give a refinery with it? Oh. So, please, could you give us more? Maybe I missed it, but... Uh,